Welcome back to my channel. I'm sorry I've been away for a little while. It's been uh, busy with work and other things and all of what's going on. We're going to talk about that today. But today's video is going to be a bit of a walk around the tanker, chat about the tanker end of the truck and all that. So I do apologise after this sequence if maybe the volume or audio isn't brilliant because I'm going to film this solely on my DJI action camera. So. The mic on that is reasonable, but not as good as what I have outfitted on this, but it's a bit better for, if it makes any sense, what I'm about to go and do, then this is, might be a solution I may need to look at for the future, but we'll see. But hopefully you'll enjoy this video, and I know it's been requested to talk about the tanker end of the truck. So uh, hopefully this may answer any questions or show you around it. If you have any questions about the tanker, please ask. I want to put a disclaimer in this. This isn't a full-on tutorial of how precisely you must use and operate the tanker. This is just off my knowledge. I can make mistakes, so don't use this video as a sole way of learning how to use a tanker. It, it, please approach your employer if you have no clue how to use a tanker, if you're obviously using tankers, but they should be training you up either way. So don't use this as a sole training reference, this is more just to show you around the tanker and general gists of stuff around it. So, just as a disclaimer, this is not an instructional video, this is just how I do it, or maybe not how I do it, but, you know. As I say, it's just a dis disclaimer, just to say, look, you know, I'll take no responsibility if you <laughs> do something certainly out of context and then say well I showed you how to do it no I haven't after just showing you around my tanker the only reason I'm giving this disclaimer because there is many different types of tankers on the market so even in our own fleet a tanker I'm about to show you which is a single pot tanker which means it holds basically one load in it then you have like a three pot tanker so in the name it's got three separate pots so you can put technically three different products in there for example and you get loads of other variations as well I could probably spend a long time talking about the variations and even I don't know all of them you know so there's still stuff I'm learning and picking up now and again and can go then you get the different specialized tankers as well so you have the fuel different types of feed and food products so that's a bit like what I've got is for fo food products generally generally more on the animal front but also we can move some certain stuff that can be for human stuff but mostly what I do is farm based so it's mainly for our animal feeds what I do and what other ones obviously you've got your chemical tankers and gas all sorts they carry different types of liquid gases you know that sort of nature you also have your powder tankers as well which is a another one but we don't touch powder we don't generally in our company touch chemicals overly i don't some do but mostly we we don't touch that far as i'm aware we, we do to a certain degree but i haven't t touched the chemical end because i don't have my edr so I've, well that's what out shall i say so yeah, that's just a general gist. So the tank I've got is basically a uh, a food or feed tanker. You know, just it's not the precise name of it. It's just generally what I would class it as. You know, for its use. So as I said we move a range of products like uh, waste milk, whey, which generally whey is a product. Or side product from cheese manufacturing generally produces whey different mixtures of like yogurt other milk products as well whilst we do yeast also we do molasses which is like a binder it's like a sh it's a sugary product so it's from generally from sugar factories and manufacturing so it's basically a binder that they use mainly for uh, cattle you know what I've learnt 
Uh, anything else? So we do yeast. We do do some other bits and bobs now and again, but that's the the bulk of what I do. We do do other things in our company, but I'm just going to focus on, I said, primarily what I do, you know, because I don't want to go off into a field that I don't really have a huge amount of experience in, you know, so I don't want to mislead anybody, if you know what I mean, as best as I can. <laughs> not do. Not that I will. It's just, you know, I try to know, talk about what I do know, then I try to stay away from what I do not know, if that makes any sense. So, what we'll do, we'll probably hop outside. I'll start to take you around. I might do a quick thing in here first, talk about how we get the pump going. Well, I'm in here, may do that in a second. So we'll start off with that, then we'll go off for a walk around the tank, take you through a few different things on the tank. We're not going to set anything up necessarily, might do a little bit, we'll see. We'll see how it goes, but I might just talk about it, open up the odd thing, maybe show you inside the tank. You know, once you know it, there's it's pretty simple stuff really, a tank heads. It's interesting. And as a YouTuber, it's not incredibly exciting. Because I know I'm going to reiterate a point here, aren't I? That we I'm not allowed to film on customer sites, but it's kind of key, that is. Because I would do some... I have had some ideas of sticking a camera in the tank while I'm loading or tipping to watch the product come in initially, and which might be an option for the future, but... Uh, my filming is very limited on the use of actually using the tanker for obvious reasons so hopefully this video will hopefully give you a rough gist if not please comment down below i will try to do a live video of actually using the tanker but at the moment i don't see i have a few ideas but i don't see a way of doing it without you know, breaching company policy at the end of the day, which I will not do at the end of the day. So I'm fully respectful of that. So what we'll do, I'll catch you in a second and we'll go through how to roughly start up. We're not going to run the truck, but I'm going to talk about what, what you do to get the pump going. See you in one second. Hello again. Um, hopefully you can hear me okay. So what you do, you have the truck running you're in neutral, the parking brake's on, so you make sure the parking brake's on. And then, down here, you have on the DAF the PTO switch, which you'll just turn on like that. You'll then get a symbol that should appear somewhere on the dash here, of the same symbol that that's on the button, if it's still readable. You, you know which one it is when it pops up. Once that's lit up, you knock this up, to roughly I'm trying to about smidge about six six thousand RPM on there around that's all region maybe a little bit higher but not much more higher than six so just before you hit the green that's normally the best location I found on this truck for pumping and you just knock it up by using the cruise control button so when you're ticking over you're on the uh, PTO not that up and then it's pumping the hydraulics around you know and that, that's pretty much as simple as it goes and to shut it down you either put your foot on the brake or press the off on the cruise sorry about that guys just sing a Make sure we've got you in the picture. Off on the cruise, which will then knock it off, turn off the uh, low, or turn off the revs, so it will go back down to idle. Then you can uh, knock the PTO off. Then the icon will disappear off the dash. I'm sorry, it's a bit vague what I've done there, but that's the general gist. Thing is, it's very depend what truck you're on. You know, each truck has the buttons in different locations, but it's a similar idea on most of the trucks. There's some variations 
depend on you know, the trucks. So what I'll do, I'll go and get ready and we'll go and have a stroll outside, check out the tanker, we'll probably have a walk around it first. So I'll spin you around so you're hopefully looking at me. Let's move my, sorry, being a bit, should have done the, maybe do a bit of trimming around maybe, we'll see. But yeah, what we'll do, we'll go and have a walk around and have a check see hopefully it's fairly stable hopefully a stabilization on the camera is good I should really but we'll try a bit of hand stabilization today so hopefully it turns out okay so just go have a lit literally a stroll around the, the tanker we may go up on top have a look in look at some of the uh, operations on the switches on there and look at some of the pipes or we might look at a, a pipe because once you've seen the pipe and how it connects up it's the general same with all of them really so I will catch you in a second hello everybody uh, here's the tanker that's my tanker 83 it's a single pot tanker if you look up up there you've got like a valve which opens up I'll explain what it does on the other end but this it'll make sense on the other end basically it's a breather valve which you can open up from the control panel, which I'll show you when we get around there, which goes down here. Obviously, when we've opened it, you can put your hand underneath it and you feel if it's sucking air in, if you're offloading, or if it's blowing air, it's loading. And obviously, if product starts coming out, <laughs> there's something up, we better stop your operation. I've left my lights on just so I can show you the way thing. I do apologise, she is a bit mucky, because I just haven't had time to wash her this week. So, uh, hopefully, I was hoping to get a wash before, but as I say, it is a bank all day today, so there's nowhere open. So we are in a public area, so we'll be hearing other people about. So, obviously, we've got all the pipe storage on here, so we're just sort of walking around it, aren't we, aimlessly? So we've got all the pipes here. These are my smaller pipes on this side, and I carry a... Uh, a wash bucket and a few other bits and bobs on the side there as well use the space effectively here is my tool bin normally i have it locked obviously i got the gloves which uh, grab those and just all my connections and all that that you'll need i'm not going to go for all my connections because it's all very job specific but basically they'll adapt onto anything that i need to gain access onto so here's the rear end of the trailer Nothing hyper exciting, but we got the pump, which is just down here. Don't ask me what the full on spec is of the pump. It's a pump, hydraulic pump. That's kind of funny. You can hear me talking from the back echo from the tank for some reason. And obviously, you got the valve. So this valve opens up that pipe there if you were getting loaded by another pump. So it's your free flow connection on that side, which means it doesn't go through your pump, if that makes any sense. Obviously this side opens up the side for the pump. Ideally, whichever side you're not using, you leave shut. If you're not using both, you leave shut. Both shut. Simple. Obviously the more exciting end of things here. Oh, I'm a bit irritated as I meant to have my tripod this week. Is obviously the connections. So starting on this side, we'll start on the top, which is your weight weigh controller. So we'll just you turn it on by this. I'm not going to run through it because I'm not a ninja on it, but hopefully you can see that and it will ignore that. It's going for its test. You'll know where it's set eventually, and that obviously it does in its name. Is is to check your weight. Wait, some run off the alarm system as well, mine doesn't, mine's just pretty basic, that's been set up, but it does the job. And in here is the dirty control panel, which I put my glove on, so <laughs> should we put the glove on before, but there we go. In here, hints the vent, is that vent breather that I was talking about at the beginning. 
you just pull that and it opens up. I don't know if you can hear that, but you can uh, hear, hear it venting. So it's obviously got a bit whatever residual product I may have in there, which will be a residual amount in the tank. You know, of like fat or whatever. Sometimes, depending on the products you're carrying, can sometimes have some residual in there. But it can get a bit gaseous. So that's also the vent. These two are the offside and near side railing controls up there for the rails. So I'll knock them up now. So they go up like that. The other side goes up. Hey, it's the first time it's done. Well, not first time. It doesn't always do that. <laughs> Sometimes I have to pull up one side. But I'll leave those open for now, so I'll leave that open. So I want to add for a health and safety note here. If you're ever going up to the top on these, and you'll be probably taught this, is you always put the railings up. Never go up there if you've got railings fitted without putting the railings up. Because most likelihood is the company will not cover you if you fall off. And obviously you keep three points of contact when you're climbing up, so obviously I won't climb up with you handheld like this. But before we go up there, We'll finish off what's here. All right, on the left here, just below the control panel, is the speed of the pump. So you can spin this and it will just alter how fast you're either pumping it off or sucking it on. Some places want you to load them slowly because the pipes are delicate, you know, or, you know, there's... They're, they're, there's stuff that comes up that you will have to use that quite a bit and keep an eye on the speed. You may be loading off another pump, so you don't want to burn off the other pump, so you slow it down or you speed it up, whichever is the demand. But that's the speed control. This is very exciting. This turns on the work lights, which you've got one on this side and the one where the tool bin is on the other side, which you'll be able to see. This is basically what makes the pump go, which direction you want it to go in. So if you want to uh, off offload, you put it out. Oh, it's not going to pump, obviously, at the moment, because it's not running. Back to the middle to stop the pump. And in to load in. So it's pretty self-explanatory. So if it's out this way, it's offloading. If it's in, it's pumping in. So out, pumping out, pumping in, in simple. So there might be a bit of product might come out here because you can see the dripping so I'm going to stand away and onto these connections just offload them like this. And you can see it's a valve. I'm not going to open the valve because a bit of product will probably inevitably come out. Actually we might be able to open up the other side valve and I can show you in this side. It may be better to have cleaned this side out. Which here, this is my, I think you've got three, two and a half and three inch. I could be wrong on the sizes, but obviously this is my larger three inch connection. And, oh, actually better not, because actually some product has leaked into there. But you get the idea. Those valves swing up, open. And that's how they function. And basically, on the connectors on the pipes, they connect on identical as these covers. So they go on like, like so. Once you've got the connection white in, you can close and obviously make sure, ideally, you shut both like that. This one's a bit temperamental, I'll leave that for the moment. And that's probably about it on the connection front. And obviously on this side, we've got my larger pipes. And you've got one with a three inch connector on one end as well, which is awesome. Also down here is my suspension dump. So we can dump the suspension, but I'll knock that off quickly. Just to try and save some air. And all the usual trailer. So the shunt button. And obviously the parking brake. <laughs> Sorry about that guys, and um, we'll just quickly stroll around here because I should have started off with this at the front really, but actually you can see the hydraulic 
pipes here these babies and obviously goes into there down into the hydraulic pump which is underneath here and on the other side you got the reservoir and the cooler on there you have a gauge on there to see if it's running okay i'm not going to run you for it because every pump's different every company uses slightly different pumps we may have a brief little look at it in a second maybe if i remember uh anything else on this side i wonder so we've done the way loader we've done the controls we've done the the speed we've gone through the connections obviously the pump controls Obviously, as I said, the connections are identical, so it's heads a little bit damaged on that one. But you can see what I'm meaning is it's identical sort of connection set form. It doesn't have the blocker as on those end caps. It's easy taking a pipe off to demonstrate the exact same thing that those end caps will do. It's the same as what those heads are, a set form. The pipe obviously has a pipe coming out. That's probably the best way to describe it. Then you plug on either using one of the many adapters onto wherever you need to connect into to offload it, load it and different sites have different policies so I'm not going to run off on that side because we could spend all day talking about that but that aside I think we've done the bulk of the lower half obviously you've got the, the lights on the back, standard outfitting reverse lights those two anything else that I may have missed as I will look at this later and go, I have missed this. I think we have covered the bulk of it. Also, what I should have done is taken my bucket off and stuck that below the connector and opening up. That's what we could have maybe done, but saves us making a bit any more mess. We won't do that for obvious reasons. And don't worry, the pipes come out there. There's no toxicity of that. And also you got all the brakes, all that down in the centre. So I'll just uh, walk you along. Obviously the air tanks. And this is also a lift axle as well. But obviously when the truck's off, it automatically lowers down on the trailer. And obviously the trailer legs. So yeah, so I'll catch you in a second on top of the tanker. And we'll run through the top of the tanker. Oh, sorry about that guys. See you in a second. Hello everybody, hopefully you can uh, hear me okay yet again. We are now on top, obviously, of the truck. Since we're on top, I know it's a bit dirty, but hey, that's the top of my cab. With the AirPod, so you don't get to see this angle that often. So we'll connect us down here. And okay, let's get to the first thing we see down here. Is that's the over what I've called the emergency pressure release valve. So if it comes under pressure, the idea is meant to allow a release of pressure or air in or out. So if it comes over pressure or under pressure, don't rely on that though. The main reason why that will be going off when you're loading or offloading is this here valve hasn't opened. You can tell. See if you can see this okay. There is an arrow pointing. So if it's up, it's shut. If it's pointing in line with the pipe, it's open. I know it's make it, it's pretty basic stuff that, but a lot of people miss that. And sometimes when you pull that valve down there to open that up, it doesn't always do it. Some of them can get sticky over time. You sometimes have to keep playing with it to get it to open. If that doesn't open, the other solution is to open up a pot. That's the safest solution generally. Obviously very dependent on what you're doing and what product you're dealing with. So, and I'm sure you'll be briefed of what the score is of that anyway. Anything else? We're going to have a look at the hatches. I've pre-opened this partly so you can get an idea. You can use a rubber hammer to open them. That is probably the recommended way to open up a, a hatch. But, you know, whatever way that you don't cause any damage and it's safely done. So all you need to do is knock these open. We have depressurized, by the way. So big important thing, as when we opened the valve earlier, 
you may have not heard me and hear it depressurized it's recommended to open the valve first if you're going in at the top just so you don't get any product sprayed over you or you don't struggle to open the because if it, the suction in there you might not be able to open the hatch but equally if you got a product in there there could be a lot of build up of pressure wanting to come out so and sometimes in that scenario the product will want to come out at you and trust me you do not want that to happen so what we're going to do i'm going to throw on all my gloves we can have a little look see insider i didn't realize that's come off have a little look see at that in a second to open up it actually should be clean than i thought she should be this may be a bit loud it may fall down onto the seat but you open it up sometimes stick up like that she may which seems to be pretty secure up but normally actually let's do it so yeah that's how she'll sit when open you also have a seal so you want to always check the seal it's okay that's it's not brilliant but uh, still functional now inside the pot an echo 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 <laughs> Also, I've opened this one because also you can see the, the, the breather valve opening just there. So that's another way to inspect the breather valve, is to look in through this pothole. So what we'll do is shut this so we can limit down any echo. And obviously up like that, you do the opposite, you move them up like that and spin it around, lock it up till it comes. Don't lock it so it's so tight that you can't reopen it but so it's tight so you get a good seal around it so ideally tighten that one up tighten that one up tighten that one up and vice versa opposite ones ideally you know is the best solution all right here underneath my five ton strap which i need to have a look at in a minute so i realized the handle on the strap had come off but it's still doing its job so not a major concern is my filter net we use for stuff a bit like molasses depending on what top variant you, you're putting in primarily when they top load you and top loading I haven't done it for a while I think they do it from the middle middle pot or middle lid generally and the other thing is a lot of tankers have different types of lids but generally similar different sizes different variants you may have outer covers if you've got a thermal sleeve on the tanker all sorts but this is just a net that we would put in to all these potholes and the product would get poured in into this and if there's any big particles it would break it up it's easier to store this up here because otherwise you have to keep carrying it up here especially when it's a bit dirty it's not that pleasant only if you have to carry it up so this is a method I was shown and it seems to work I just need to check this out first but it's she's still secure still doing the job I've got my step ladder up here as well it's a good location to stick it I think it's out of the way it's secure it's not going anywhere I shouldn't use it a huge amount to be honest but it's always handy to have I found and also got the the not hydraulic rams but the air rams to knock up your one this side one on the other side for the railings which that's another check you do when you come up here first is to make sure the railings stay up you don't want them coming down when you're up here obviously because <laughs> uh, it might get spicy I was walking down here just to see if there's anything we missed. Obviously, three points of contact when you're climbing up here. Yes, again, make sure the railings are up when you come up here. Big must. Do not come up here without putting the railings up. Otherwise, all it takes is one long slip. There's nothing to, you know, save you. I know, yes, it's not, you could make an argument, but at the same time, I'd rather them up than down obviously make sure when you're down though you do put them down because <laughs> you can see the height of them you know so it has been known for drivers to go down country lanes forgetting to put these down on some trailers 
I'm not too sure, but I think most trailers they do put the brakes on though, but I found not on all trailers though, they don't seem to. But some of them they do. So in theory you can't drive off of these up anyway, but sometimes it that system doesn't work or something like that. So I actually have moved off on the spot once with one side still up for some reason. Luckily I noticed, I was like, hey, why is the wings up? Obviously you stop, put them down. But it's a fatal mistake to leave them up because all it takes is a branch to catch it and you'd be surprised how easy it can destroy this. I mean I've caught a branch on these when, with them down and it had pulled, I think it pulled out one of these and ripped off one of the wires on this side I think, I think it was this side, I could be wrong. But yeah I think we've probably covered and maybe in my own way over covered a lot of it. I do apologise that she is in pretty not nice condition. She's not uh, in her cleanest condition, shall I say. I normally have her in, but uh, as I said, we've been working hard. And uh, sometimes she ends up in this state, and no doubt when I can, I'll get her back to Macklet, but there's no guarantee I'll be able to do this video after that. And this is a perfect opportunity, dirty or not, to get her, give you a show around her. I'll probably catch you down at the bottom in a second. See you in a second. Hello everybody, sorry about this, I've forgotten to add this into my massive video. This is the oil storage for the hydraulics in there, so I've got a gauge in there so it's a bit dirty. Won't show accurate level at the moment anyway, so it's been off a little bit. I'm not going to show you for all the ins and outs of it, but uh, I'll say yeah, this is the cooler to cool down the uh, oil after it's pumped because it will get incredibly hot going through. And this is a stay, I think it's a pressure gauge, obviously as long as it's in the green, you're all laughing your head off. If it's in the red, that tells you what to do, change the filter. <laughs> so you request to get the filter changed, but it's all good. And nice thing on, on here, I actually get a storage area in there, which uh, I don't really utilise, but it's handy if you have to take the pipes off at any stage, to chuck them in if needs be, I suspect. That's generally what I use it for. I normally just leave them connected on that end and just lob the rest into there if I ever have to travel without hydraulics connected if I'm towing it. any other trailers. Actually, recently I have been. It's actually the first time I've done it with this truck. But it worked out pretty well. And I think I do apologise for this extra bit of me going on, but I thought I'd add that in. So I just suddenly went, boom, I've got this. And I'll take you back to wherever I have cut this in or out of. But that is basically the hydraulic storage or reservoir storage and radiator. And it also has a fan in there as well, blows out this way. So you know it's running because you can feel the air and it makes a load of noise, obviously. But that aside, there you go. See you in a bit. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hopefully, I'm in shot. We have just got back down, and we're just I'm going to show you through. Uh, well, it's not difficult. Lowering down the railings. So all you do, I'll try and hopefully you can get a reasonable angle of this. So I'm sort of making sure you're going to get sides of it. You just push these in, and the railings will go down. Nothing. <laughs> Hyper exciting, but just out of any interest, that's what you do. Just press those in, just give them a tap to make sure everything's shut. You can shut the door, secure that door, stow away. Key jobs are good, and so it's not a security key, it's just a key to shut it. I'll quickly shut my gloves away. Also another handy thing to have is obviously some spanners to tighten up connections if needs be. I carry some spare oil just in case as well in there. So you know I do utilize the trailer for a bit of storage if needs be 
You sometimes have a storage box which you input all sorts in, there's nothing much in there really. To be honest, nothing exciting. Obviously the normal stuff with trailers, check that your pins in, your locks in and all that all in, all your connections are made, your legs are fully wound up. It's all, you know, the fundamentals of a, like any old trailer. The other thing, this is a short trailer, plus also be aware of, like in my truck we have no run-ups, plus even with tankers it's not recommended to rely on run-ups either. Because if you look at the plate that you run up on, that is kind of a lot smaller than most, are, most uh, curtain siders or flatbeds. Yeah, so there's no room for error, really. I'm not trying to big it up. But there is a margin of error on these trailers, and it's so easy to mess up. You get some tolerance to mess up, but don't try to. That's, that's what I'm trying to get at. Uh, anything else to know about the trailer? You know, it's pretty simple to get to know it. It's like any old trailer. It, it, it's a trailer that, as a driver, you're, you're responsible for loading, offloading. You know, keeping an eye on it, responsible, responsible for the health and safety. Which brings up one more thing I was thinking about when I was climbing down. Before you ever put up the railings, so up there, or even go up there as well, check you have no power lines like that above you. Just another... You, you kind of do it automatically, but I've forgotten to mention that. Uh, it it kind of is obvious, but uh, some people do not think about that and yeah. It sadly does happen. I mean, if you work on bulkers, or if you know about bulkers, it's the same thing with uh, tipping lorries as well. That like you're always told about, look what's above you. Even if somebody's offloaded there a million times before, check. Because sometimes they can put a wire up, you haven't seen it before. Yeah. And on a metal trailer, electricity and metal, not a nice mixture. But that's probably, just probably one of the last major health and safety notes I will make. Just for liability. Obviously, if you're not sure about... If you're given these trailers no training, ask about training. I would seriously recommend, before you touch these... Even if you've seen this video... Got a wasp trying to bother me. <laughs> Let's try and walk away from it. I think he must have landed some hope it's not on me. Sorry about that guys, <laughs> being assaulted by a wasp. So yeah, so hopefully you have enjoyed the video. As I was about to try and say before the wasp interrupted me, is if you ever, ever, ever going to have this, or use a tanker or any, or even any trailer you're not familiar with, and certainly like something like a tanker where you are the one who has to load it or connect it up, even if you think it's simple, ask for a bit of training. If you haven't been trained, if you do not know actually how to operate one of these, don't take what you've seen on videos like mine or anybody else's channel for granted that's how you do it. Because there's so many variations of these tankers. You can get one very similar to mine, but only take one thing to be different. And if you're not aware of what you're looking at or what you're looking for to operate the system, it, you know, it, it will catch you out. Generally, to load and offload one of these things, you always got to think about: can it breathe? Have you got the connections? So before you even open up the valves, make the connection. Never open up the valves, especially into the main tank. It's not so bad if you got those shut. Sometimes you want to clean out the inner pipes, but certainly if you got the tank open, whatever's in there is going to come out. And especially if you're loaded. And also on the other end, same score. Do not open up either end until you've connected the pipes up, until you connect it up and you've made the seals. When you're offloading, this is one slight difference with the reaver, is initially you start the offload with gaseous products. Wait, leave for a look of it. It's kind of a bit of an experience thing here, but don't leave for a huge amount of time. But certainly for a minute or two, let it pump off a bit to relieve some of the pressure in the tank then open the valve because what quite often happens with some products 
if you open up the breather straight away sometimes it will come out from the breather so you make a big mess in the front other things if you park up with a gaseous product at night sometimes but see it varies with different products you learn it for experience but sometimes it's best to open up the the breather sometimes if you think there's a risk of it going over maybe not you know it's kind of experience thing really it's very hard for me to say right well, this scenario precisely you'll be fine that scenario that's kind of you kind of read the product and that's down to what you haul at the end of the day but it's something i'll put, add in there so you're aware of it but ideally if you've got a calmish product open up the valve and you should be fine over a cool night in general but if you're not too sure leave it shut but bear in mind there might be a bit of pressure in the tank in the morning so uh, just bear that in mind and normally you hear the overflow if it is really high but the key thing is when you're loading offloading open that valve because you may have seen the videos tanks exploding yeah that could happen not what you want to happen as a tanker driver that's probably the old or the ultimate worst case scenario is happening and normally it's because your emergency breather has failed. That's why you do not rely on the emergency breather. If, the emerg if that emergency breather fails, then you're relying on that. And that also leads on, always keep checking your breather when you open it, that's like still functioning, because it can, if it malfunctions, shut. But it hasn't really happened to me, it's shut while loading. But I have gotten to open it once or twice, but luckily I've noticed you know, no major drama, mainly because I could hear the, the overflow valve going. But yeah, aside from that, all good. Hopefully, you, uh, yes again, I'm sorry I've been going on and on about the tanker. You know, it's just one of these things I suddenly realise, oh, what about this? I suppose I'm a bit like that, I'm a bit sp uh, spontan spontaneous, is probably the word. Hopefully, I can't really see myself at the moment, normally I have a... A screen that I can see if I'm looking at myself on this one, but uh, hopefully it's a nice location up here. It's a nice area up here. We're down in Cornwall at the moment. It's not as nice as it was earlier, but still good weather. But yeah, so I do apologise for some of the videography on this. It it is probably a bit unstable. Sorry, just seeing what people up to. You know, it's a little bit unstable here and there. It's not my best videography I've ever done. Hopefully it's informative though. Showing around the tanker. I will probably aim to do another one in the future. Maybe a bit more, I'd say, entertaining. I mean, once you get to know these tankers, it's, it is what it is at the end. Now, I know it's probably very interesting if you don't operate one of these tankers, you know. I suppose it's like anything. Once you know it, you do it every day, it becomes normal. <laughs> Never really chatted like this around the tanker. I can hear all the echoing inside the tank, which is kind of distracting me. <laughs> Hopefully it's not too irritating on the video. But I thought I'll finish this video off out here, because it's just nice to be out. Hopefully I'm in shot. I'm probably not. I'm, po I'm awful. Walking about vlogger. <laughs> But I thought we'll have a little stroll around. Yes, I say it's, this is one of my favourite spots to park up. I'm not saying it's the best spot ever I've ever parked up in, but this is reliably one of my favourite locations. Generally, it's quite quiet around here. It can be quite popular with walkers and all that that you may have seen in the distance, but we haven't filmed them directly, so it's public land. So yeah. Sorry about that, sorry for miranding on about stuff, but uh, yet again, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Please uh, check out my other content on my channel. Please smash that uh, like button if you liked it. If you do dislike it though, please let me know why. And I'm aware it's probably because of my videography, but please let me know if you do dislike it. If you haven't subscribed already, please smash the subscribe button. Hit really does help the channel out it helps me out as well not financially but it's just nice to see you and it also if you want to see future content it makes it a little bit easier 
as well for you to refine me. <laughs> so it's beneficial on all accounts. Also hit the bell icon as well for any reminders of when I do post. I do yet again reiterate my apology for lack of content lately. I say I try not to create content for the sake of creating content. So that's the primary reason. I will do probably a channel update video today as well, which I'll chat more about it in, hopefully, if I get around to doing it. So, yeah, hold out for that one, but hopefully, yet again, you've enjoyed this. It's been informative. I know it's been a well-requested video to talk about the tanker. I know, yes, it is fascinating if you're not used to tankers, and I'm sorry for being a little bit bland yet again. You know, I've... It's hard, it's hard without actually pumping something off or one to try and make it exciting. The problem is, as I said, I fall back down to, you know, company policy at the end of the day. And I'm fully respectful of com company policy and compliant, or compliant with it is the word. So at the end of the day, I've got to respect my customers and my company's point of privacy where it requests. And let's finish off with a little bit of a pan around on here. So, yet again, thank you very much for watching. It is all seriously very much appreciated.